Dear students, in this class, we are going to discuss theater mantle and the choroid plexus. The new objectives of this class will be, at the end of the class, you should be able to define the ventricular system, name the ventricles of the brain, describe the parts of the later ventricle, and describe the choroid plexus of the brain. If you see, this is the ventricular system of the central nervous system. As you see, this ventricular system, it comprises of two later ventricles, the third ventricle, the fourth ventricle, and the central canal of the spinal cord. As you see the two later ventricles, they communicate with the third ventricle through interventricular foramen of Mongo, whereas the Third ventricle communicates the fourth ventricle to duct of cells. The fourth ventricle communicates with the central canal and also with the subarachnoid space through three foramina, which are located in the root of the fourth ventricle. That is the foramen of Magendai and the, uh, the laterally to the foramen of Mushka. As you see at the lower end of the spinal canal, it is a bit dilated and which is sometimes called as the ventricle of the brain. The ventricles are fluid filled cavities located within the brain. There are two later ventricles, the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle. The two later ventricles communicate through the interventricular foramen of mono with the third ventricle, whereas the third ventricle is connected to the fourth ventricle by narrow cerebellar aqueduct, which is also called as aqueduct of cellulose. So we have the two later ventricles on the two cerebral hemispheres. Then we have the third ventricle. These communicate to the interventricular foramen of Mongo, while as the third ventricle to cerebral aqueduct communicated with the fourth ventricle. Again, these are the two later ventricles. So foramen of Mongo going to the third ventricle and through cerebral aqueduct going to the fourth ventricle. You can see this is the sagittal section of the brain. You can see this is the main structure there, what is known as corpus callosum. This is the brain stem here. This is the thalamus. And here you can see this is called as fornix. And between the corpus callosum and the fornix, we have here the, this part where we have septum pellucidum. Under this septum pellucidum, there lies the later ventricle. You can see here, this is septum pellucidum has been removed here, and it is the later ventricle. So, what are these later ventricles? There are two large later ventricles present in each cerebral hemisphere. So this is a one cerebral hemisphere where there lies the one later ventricle. Similarly, in another cerebral hemisphere, there lies the other later ventricle. The ventricle is roughly C-shaped. You can see it is roughly C-shaped. The later ventricle is communicated with the cavity of the third ventricle through interventricular foramen of mono. So this is the interventricular foramen of mono. Coming to the parts of the later ventricle. Each later ventricle has a body, so this is the body of the later ventricle, which is present in the parietal lobe of the cerebrum. Anterior horn, it extends to the frontal lobe of the cerebrum. And posterior lobe goes into the ostral lobe of the cerebrum. And inferior horn goes into the temporal lobe of the cerebrum. Coming to the from the Interventricular foramen posteriorly as far as the posterior end of the thalamus. So, body extends from the interventricular, interventricular foramen. This is the interventricular. You put a plane here like this. So, from here up to the posterior end of the thalamus here, we is, this is the body of the later ventricle. Here it becomes continuous as this body becomes continuous posteriorly. In the ostral lobe as the posterior horn 
and inferiorly it goes and inferior anteriorly it goes into the temple as inferior part. The body of the later ventricle, you see it has a roof and it has a floor and a middle wall. And see again, this is the septum pelostum under which there lies the later ventricle body. So this is the body part. So we can see it will be its roof, this will be its floor, and this septum pelostum itself will form the middle wall of the body. You can see here the septum pelostum has been, middle wall has been removed. So this is the roof, and this is the floor of it. The roof, you can see, is formed by the undersurface of the corpus callosum. So in the section view, this is the corpus callosum, and this is the lateral ventricle. So the roof is formed by the corpus callosum. The floor is formed by the body of the caudine nucleus and the lateral margin of the thalamus. You can see, again, this is the body of the lateral ventricle. This is the body of the lateral ventricle, and this is the caudine nucleus. Is the body of the cordial nucleus, and here a bit thalamus, later margin of the thalamus comes and forms the body floor of the later ventricle, body of the later. Middle wall, as you saw in previous pictures, it is formed by the septum pellucidum. So this is the septum pellucidum. So here you can see it is the body of the later ventricle. This is the body of the, so the septum pellucidum has been removed here. To open the cavity. So, middle wall is formed with the septum pellucidum. You can see the coronal section of the brain passing through the body of the lateral ventricle. So, this is diagrammatic. You can see this is the corpus callosum. And this is its middle wall forming septum pellucidum. Lateral wall and the floor here by the caudal nucleus and the thalamus here. The thalamus is the thalamus and this caudal nucleus. Here. This MRI picture of the brain showing the various parts of the lateral ventricle. Coming to the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle, as you see, it extends forwards into the frontal lobe. So, this is the anterior, this part is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. It con continues posteriorly with the body of the lateral ventricle at the interventricular forum of the Again, so we can see this is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. The anterior horn, you can see it has a roof, a floor, you see the floor, and a middle wall, which has been removed here, which is formed by the seven pellucidum. The roof, you can see here, it is formed by the under surface of the anterior surface of the anterior part of the corpus callosum. You can see this is the band of the corpus, what we call a genu. The genu of the corpus callosum limits the anterior horn anterior. The floor, as you see, the floor is formed by the rounded head of the caudate nucleus. Medially, a small portion is formed by superior surface of the of the corpus callosum. So, anterior horn, it is mainly the head of the caudate nucleus. So, we can see this caudate nucleus also follows the C shape of the Later ventricle. So this is the head of the caudal nucleus here, and also a small portion is formed by the superior surface of the rostrum of the corpus callosum. Coming to the anterior horn of the later ventricle, it is middle wall is formed by the septum pellucidum, as you have seen in the previous diagrams, and the anterior column of the fornix. Sometimes what is called as trigone of the later ventricle. The trigone of the later ventricle. The trigone of the lateral ventricle is a, the area where the part of the body forms a junction with the inferior horn and the posterior horn. So this part here, which is roughly triangular in shape, so the body here joins the posterior horn and the inferior horn. Here a part, triangular, this triangular part, it is called as trigone of the lateral ventricle. This area is referred as the atrium of the lateral ventricle also. Which is also called as atrium of the lateral ventricle. Importance of this is here the choroid plexus, which we will discuss subsequently, is enlarged as choroid glomus. So here it is enlarged and following a glomus like structure, which is called choroid glomus. 
I mean, to the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. So it extends into the occipital lobe. So it has roof and the lateral wall. So it has a roof and the lateral wall. The roof and the lateral wall are formed by the fibers of the tapetum of the corpus callosum. The lateral to the tapetum are the fibers of the optic radiation. The medial wall coming to the medial or the posterior horn or the occipital horn. Medial wall or posterior horn has two elevations. The superior swelling is caused by splinter fibers of the corpus callosum called forceps major. So we have the corpus, just larger fibers of the corpus callosum, what we call a forceps major. The superior swelling is referred to as a bulb of the posterior horn also, which is also called as bulb of the posterior horn. The inferior swelling, inferior swelling is produced by the calcarean sulcus and is called as calcar anus. So this is calcar anus. Because this calcarean sulcus, which is located in the occipital lobe of the brain, is a very deep sulcus. So this indent is the medial wall of the posterior horn, and it produces a bulge in the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle, and that we call as calcar anus. So in the middle wall, there are two swelling forces major and calcar anus. This is a coronal section of the brain passing through the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. So again, posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. So we have there the tapetum and the calcar anus. So again, you can see the in the section. In the MRI. Coming to the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle, it is exits inferiorly into the temporal lobe. So you can see this is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. It goes anterior inferiorly into the temporal lobe of the lateral ventricle, temporal lobe of the brain. The inferior horn has a roof. So again, you can see it has a roof and it has a floor. This is floor. Roof is formed by the inferior surface of the tapetum of corpus callosum and by the tail of the body nucleus. By the tail of the body nucleus. This is the tail of the tail of the body nucleus. The later pass anterior to the amygdala. So this is the amygdala part of the basic ganglia. Now if you see this is the cordy nucleus, it follows the concavity of the lateral ventricle. Both are C-shaped. And you can see there. Uh, anterior horn it is related to the head of the cordy nucleus. The body is related to the body of the cordy nucleus. While as the inferior horn it is related to the tail of the cordy nucleus. While in the body and in the anterior horn it forms floor. So the cordy nucleus forms floor of the body and the anterior horn. While as the cordial nucleus forms roof of the inferior horn. It forms roof here of the inferior horn. Coming to the floor of the floor of the inferior horn. Floor of the inferior horn. In this, we have laterally formed by laterally by a collateral eminence. Here is a collateral eminence produced by the collateral fissure, collateral fissure of the temporal lobe. And medially, there is a uh, swelling produced by hippocampus. The anterior end of the hippocampus, anterior end of the hippocampus is expanded. You can see it is expanded and slightly furrowed, and it is slightly furrowed to form the what we call as pest hippocampus. So we have pest hippocampus. This pest hippocampus is paw of the hippocampus because it is furrowed and it looks foot like. So it is called as pest hippocampus. So in the floor of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle, we have two swellings. One is formed by the collateral eminence, by the collateral fissure or collateral sulcus of the temporal lobe, and another is produced by hippocampus. Hippocampus. This hippocampus anteriorly. Hippocampus posteriorly goes and forms expanded structure, which is a bit furrowed, 
and it gives a foot like structure, foot like appearance, that is why it is called passive hippocampus. For that, the hippocampus is composed of gray matter. As you know, hippocampus is composed of gray matter. However, the ventricular surface of the hippocampus is covered by a thin layer of white matter called alveus, which is formed by axons of the cells of the hippocampus. So, these axons convert on the middle border of the hippocampus to form a bundle known as fimbria. We can see this is the inferior horn or later ventricle. This is the hippocampus. Try to understand it. So, being gray matter, it is composed of neurons. These neurons, these neurons, they give rise to axons. They give a layer of white matter on the ventricular aspect of the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. That is called as alveus. That is called as alveus. These axons converge on the middle border of the hippocampus. Then these axons on the alveus, they form a bundle or a tract, what is called as fimbria. So fimbria is actually the bundle-shaped tract formed by the axons of the hippocampus. Again, you can see this is the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is the appendymal lining of the cavity. And these are the neurons. They give rise to axons. They give rise to axons which form the alveus. This alveus, they ultimately form a bundle, what we call as fimbria, what we call as fimbria. So hippocampal neurons, you rise to axons, which form a layer on the ventricular aspect of the hippocampus, hippocampus swelling, and that is called as alveus. This alveus finally forms the bundle tract that is called as fimbria. Coming to telocoridae and choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle. First of all, you should understand you see, this is the ventricular cavity diagrammatic. So, as you know, gray matter is covered by fire matter. And the ventricles are lined by ependyma. That is a type of neuroglia. So, ependymal layer, which secretes the cerebrospinal fluid. So, this is the cavity of the brain, which is lined by ependyma. And here's a gray matter, which is covered by the fire matter. In between, there is a low kind of tissue, very small quantity. This pyometer here, close to the ventriculus, it is very vascular. That is called as telocoridae. That is called as telocoridae. When this pyometer, along with the ependymal matter, it goes into the ventriculus, it is invaded by polar vessels. And then it is called as choroidal process. So the telocoridae, along with the invaded polar vessels, it is called as choroid plexus. So, telocoroid, thin membrane of vascularized pyometer and ependyma. So, this is telocoroid, ependyma, plus the pyometer, in between small connective tissue, and it is highly vascular, it is called as telocoroid. Tela is a latent word, or bone and is used to describe web-like membrane or a layer. The telocoroid is a very thin part of the loose connective tissue of pyometer overlying the closed adhering to ependyma. So pyometer closely, uh, closely opposed to ependymal layer, the ventricular surface of the this layer, and in between the loose connective tissue, it is highly vascularized. That is why it's called a telocoroid. So telocoroidae form regions of minute projections known as choroid plexus. They are projected into each ventricles. So when this telocoroidae, this telocoroidae, it goes into the ventricles, it forms foldings inside the ventricles, and those foldings get invaded by blood vessels. That is called as telocoroid. That is called as choroid plexus of the ventricles. Now coming to the choroid plexus of the later ventricle. So the corpus of the lateral ventricle is, in fact, irregular lateral edge of the telocoroidae. 
which is two layered food of pia matter situated between the fornix superiorly and the upper surface of the thalamus. So fornix, so this is the fornix, and this is the thalamus. In between, there is choroid fissure, and through this, this choroid plus later ventricle enters the ventricle. It lies along the coronal fissure in the medial wall of the lateral ventricles, while it is vascularized by. So, tubular vessels invade this calacoroid to convert into choroid plexus. We have one anterior choroidal artery coming up from the internal carotid artery and several choroidal branches of the posterior cerebral artery, the medial and the lateral posterior choroidal arteries. So, these arteries they invade the calacoroid and convert the calacoroid in the ventricles into choroid plexus. Under the choroid plexus are the third ventricle. Found in the roof of the, so this is the third ventricle. This is the third ventricle, the the third ventricle. And here is the choroid plexus. In the roof of the third plexus, and it is supplied by medial posterior choroidal arteries, and when present by a superior posterior choroidal artery. Under the choroid plexus are the fourth ventricle. Located on the roof of the fourth ventricle, it is T-shaped, and you see it is T-shaped, formed by highly vascular calacoroid, suspended from the inferior half of the roof, and it is supplied by posterior inferior cerebral arteries, which come from the portal arteries. So located in the roof, the calacoroid of the fourth ventricle is located in the roof, inferior part of the roof, and highly vascularized by posterior inferior cerebral arteries, what we call it from the vertebral arteries. Clinical aspect is choroid plexus. Sometimes clinical issues can be associated with the choroid plexus, like arachnoid cystis or meningiomas and ependymomas. As you see in the this MRI picture, we have an ependymoma here, which is present. Thanks.